This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hold on to that. (laughs) Welcome back to the Shit Show 2.0. Okay, Boomer. Damn, Millennials. Wow. (laughs) Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. You want to be my wife? Oh, this is going to go downhill real quick. (laughs) What is going on? And welcome to Take On the World with Johnny and Chase. Uh, Our guest is back. This is a part two from last week's program. Uh, We got some stuff we didn't cover and we didn't want to cram everything into a three hour uh, rap session. So, can you cram all this stuff into one podcast? I don't think we can. No, we we can can go on. Yeah, we can go on for days and days and yeah. So we asked Chase to come back. Uh Chase, you want to introduce yourself and the show that you're on. Yeah, uh I'm Chase. I'm with Barrel Aged Flicks. We uh review movies and booze, talk a bunch of shit to each other and have a lot of fun. And where can they find you? Uh you can find us on Spotify. Amazon Music, we're on YouTube Music now. Pretty much anywhere you can listen to other podcasts, we're there. Sounds like what real men would do. And I know there's another show that you need to promote. Oh, yeah. Barrel Age <laughs> Chicks would hunt me down if I don't uh, <laughs> mention them. The last time Ron was on a guest spot and he didn't give a shout out, he got punched in the nuts really hard. For real? Yeah, probably. They probably just did it for fun. <laughs> yeah, for real. We got it on Sabs, the you're right. Fantastic. Um, so Barrel Age Flicks, Barrel Age Chicks, Take on the World, and uh, my other podcast is um, Berks County Unsolved Deluxe Edition. We are all on the Deluxe Edition Network, uh, so go to deluxeeditionnetwork.com, check out all the great podcasts. While you're there, check out the podcast of the month, and... <clears throat> I think this will be posted in <clears throat> May. So for the month of May, the podcast of the month will be. <laughs> Barrel Age Chicks. Are you into movies, pop culture, and comedy? Well, you got to sit down and see what the ladies think. Come meet Sammy, Snow, Crystal, Harley, and Yen as they give you the chicks perspective on movies and much, much more. This is the female side of the barrel age flicks fellers. And uh, they started up their own thing because the guys just talk too much, I guess. I don't know what it is. So grab a few beers and uh, sit down and listen to the chicks talk. Barstool Film School, a controversial comedy breakdown of some of their favorite flicks, old and new. Each episode, they take on your favorite flicks to determine if they pass the bar. And join the ranks of the truly ex- excellent bar movies. Good bar movies can be hit or miss, but you'll never know until you take your shot. And the first round is on them. I'm in for that. Go to coffeebros.com and use TOTW10 for discount at checkout. Coffee Brothers sources seasonal, award-winning, and specialty coffees, focusing on high-scoring and high-quality blends, espresso roast, and single-origin coffees which are all small batch roasted experience complex taste notes from fragrant and aromatic to bold and rich coffee brothers coffee is a two person brother team. Hence the name. They roast all of their coffees in small batches out of their New York city roastery. Go to coffeebros.com and use T O T W 10 for discount at checkout. Okay, we're back. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the collection on uh, Deluxe Edition Network. We've gathered quite a few really high quality shows. Uh, I think so too. I mean, 
<laughs> not counting this one, but I think there's some really top notch shows on the network. Y'all are great. I think you guys undersell yourselves a lot. Well, we we don't take it too seriously, so uh, we we do it for stress relief, really. That that's that's really what it is. <laughs> Listen, I absolutely contribute nothing to this thing <laughs> other than showing up and drinking beer and having a good time. It's stress relief. I, I, I just what comes off of my head is yeah. you do all the research, and then. There's shit in my head that I'll throw on you and sometimes I'll stump you and whatever. It's cheaper than therapy. Yeah. I do the research and then what he does is ask me a question that I didn't research and make me feel like an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Now I ain't never on the stone, you know what I'm saying? So um, when we started off last week, we started off, uh, we were going to focus on Bigfoot, but... uh, that kind of went down the trail, and mm. and I'm glad it did because we, we were talking about a lot of different stuff, and I found it interesting, and I think a whole bunch of people did too because we got a, a bunch of views on that video, which I really liked, and I hope they all come back for this part too uh, because I want to continue on with some of the stuff we were talking about. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, we had mentioned that we all had some personal experiences and I will go last. Do not touch me. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd like you and Johnny to expand upon Hands some. Hands above the table, Johnny. Yes, please. Way above the table. I didn't do it. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I'd like you and Johnny to expand upon some of your personal experiences. Uh, we'll start with you, Chase. Oh, um, are we talking about all paranormal or just the... Big furry guys. Uh, let's start with Not a big, including Comic Con. Let's start with a big furry guy, and then, uh, and then we can, we can get into whatever. I mean, uh, we we kind of went off the rails a little bit last time, and, and that's fine because I, I found it very interesting. Usually, I try to steer everybody back, but I, I really didn't feel like it last time because I was having fun. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my first experience. Let's see here. That was actually Christmas Day at about 6.30 p.m. on, uh, was that uh, 2017, I think it was? It might have been 28. I think it was 2018. Um, but I came around the corner driving back, back home away from Crystal grandparents where we had a, um, where we had a little Christmas get-together. And kind of illuminated the guy this thing's i guess uh, would be the left leg this was on the double yellow line uh actually his toes were touching the right side of the double yellow line and as i came around the corner and my headlights illuminated him more he was taking or it was taking a step and the next footfall was in the ditch so this thing's stride length was fucking massive um that's 10 or 12 feet came up to it it was already gone into the woods yeah it was huge i i I expect it was in the midst of a jog Hmm. but um that's one of the things that people talk about how they actually have shorter legs in comparison their to their body than humans do so when they're running it looks like they're just riding a bicycle kind of That real, real. I just gotta like smooth. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I just heard a Queen song go through my head. Like, <laughs> why is that thing on a bicycle? Ride my at bicycle. Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, my second experience was just footprints that i found like four or five days after easter i think that was 2021 and then uh, i think it was later in that year i want to say around november that i actually saw one off in the outskirts of the wood line on that same property out in like partlow virginia um and it was just kind of tree peeking at at me like I, so the thing is i i'm a dumbass all right i really like flashlights um <laughs> 
<laughs> I had just got a new flashlight that was like. The fuck is that? Um, and you could see, you know, I thought it was an owl or something up in the tree at first. And I'm shining the light and I see it crouch really quick. And then kind of peek out the side and then stand back up. And then, then I started to barely make out the actual silhouette of the body. And that's when I was like, oh, my God. So I went and grabbed Crystal. And we, came, we both came out and I showed her. And it was still kind of chilling out there and stepped out away from the tree a little bit. Um, at which point she was completely done with the situation, said she wanted nothing to do with it. And it was bullshit. And she went back inside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then was it uh, two years ago now we had a group of like three of them, probably about 30 yards ish off the front porch at this house, which is different property from that last one. Um, but I've noticed over the last three or four years now, it's been kind of a habituation zone where we live. Um, but yeah, we, we get a kind of a habituation pattern here between like the ass end of October to about March, most years. We didn't see much this year at all, but um, there, I actually, uh, had a, a point out mm -hmm. there where I started exchanging things and I'd bring like an apple and put it on, on the stump mm -hmm. and I got like a couple snail shells and a mushroom. Yeah, that's crazy, man. In return. It was kind of neat. I've seen I've seen some things on online with the uh that small exchange <clears throat> and it was like uh apples and that was the other thing uh marbles. I think we touched on this before. And you mentioned marbles. that you mentioned that in in part 1 where the uh uh Native Americans uh had uh, legends or yeah, stories trade. of trading. <clears throat> Would <laughs> you like leave a penthouse? I was penthouse was magazine. I did think that was fascinating because I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I had never heard that. <laughs> Glad you heard that. Uh, I heard you. You like? I'm just gonna ignore that. What do you got? What do you got? So, yeah. I know Get some Johnny KY jelly and a, some beer. Uh, um, <laughs> like a structure in Colorado, right? <clears throat> uh, yes. Well. Like I said before, I go into saying I did not know it was a structure when I first encountered it. So we went to the same place, same area, elk hunting for, I don't know, like six, seven years. And the first time I walked up there and it was like, it looked like a big teepee, man. It sticks, like not sticks, but trees, fucking trees. And they weren't huge trees, but like, like trees the size of your leg. And I have pictures, and I'll throw them up. I'm not going to try to do it on the screen again. And uh, I just walked by. I'm like, huh, that's weird. Gotcha. That's weird. I'm like, okay, maybe some drunk people came by. Yeah, and was so like, we get, um, I don't see any structures per se, but we definitely have tree sign around here, um, like directional snapping. I don't know if you guys are familiar with oh, that, yeah. but it seems like they, they might um, – Mark territories where like and branches are snapped off snap at like off every ten lake. foot high, and like who's yeah who's tall enough to do that? And then why and would you? Why would you? They're do that? all in the same direction, right? <clears throat> yeah, like the snap off is pointing in one direction, and another I don't know ten meters or they're like weaved. Meters, they're so weaved, so uh, you'd know like okay, it's obvious they didn't fall that way. You know, they're, they're like a tree right. would fall and then another branch is weaved over top of it and underneath. And you're like, okay, something intervened with that and did that. It wasn't natural. And and if you're not <clears throat> looking for it and paying attention, you would tr totally just be like, oh, it's just a tree that fell. Oh, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and absolutely. I mean, that was that's a, a method of marcation used by 
a lot of the indigenous people what was that um, um throughout north america there was you know, also I, that other one where like if you ever see a, a tree that like it looks like they broke it and snapped it so it looks like an l um yep pointing toward water is that, is that what it is pointing towards water but it, i mean it could be like a huge like yep. tree coming and like just a stump and it looks like it's it it was a naturally broken and turned a certain way and then it grew that way and like that is not natural that's either they, they what i was watching at the time was they said that was like a native Amer- american thing to do was to snap the tree and then point a direction of whatever they were trying to you know do <clears throat> well it was a specialized you actually have to score one side of it as you bend it down because if you snap it it'll just die um right. okay so they'll score one side and they'll score the other side and create that l shape yeah that's fascinating it's like when you go in the woods you don't like really think about that shit like it's like da, 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 I'm in the woods no, having a good time. Not in modern time, no. Yeah, no. But I mean, in back in the day, the woods was all people had, and you know, it, it was a source of everything: food, life, uh, water. Mm-hmm. And you know, are you, are, if you were in a tribe, would you give up your water source? Like, hey, come right over here. Hell no. A fucking neon arrow sign. You know, you're gonna make some kind of. But isn't that what? Yeah. The, I mean, if everybody did that, wouldn't everybody know that sign? No, not necessarily. Not the white folk. Well, back in the day, I mean, you're talking like, you know, the, I don't know, ninth century and on. This, this was very commonplace, and probably long before that. Um, and these were these were tree signs that they would make, and were were pretty well understood interculturally between the different nations. I think it's just like, it's like another language that's not spoken anymore. You know, it's. Absolutely. You know, you, you look at it and be like, oh, well, that makes sense. But uh, uh, when we go out, if we went out there during that day, we're not looking for like a bent tree that says we might make the correlation and figure it out. But I, I don't know. I doubt it. So um, <clears throat> now. I'm not act as yeah, my mouth is dry as hell. I'm not as uh Bigfoot educated. <clears throat> What's the thumping for those who have no clue? You want me to show you? Uh so the tree knocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the tree knocks. Um yeah, tree knocking is actually a really well documented method of long range communication among other great apes. Um and obviously we haven't observed one doing it, so it's not like we can 100% prove that it is, in fact, Sasquatch doing it. But we hear it a lot when coupled with other reports of sightings and things like that. Um, and it, it's just a very effective way of, you know, you take a big dry log, basically, and smack the crap out of a tree. It's not exactly difficult to do, but it indicates the use of tools and indication of attempted communication yeah it could whether be like it's a, for territorial reasons yeah. or what we don't know knock on the pipe three times wait what's that song shit <laughs> if you want me <laughs> there you go twice on the <laughs> pipe if, if the you want me no. no there we go <laughs> <laughs> you go way yeah, back for that one and karaoke now. our fans have asked you never to sing again <laughs> not gonna happen <laughs> it's my love man so knock on the tree three times no if you want to get raped by a yeti <laughs> uh twice on no jesus christ twice on the route <laughs> if the answer is yes <laughs> okay <laughs> You might want to edit that out. <laughs> no, I'm not editing that out. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody needs to know what I deal with. <laughs> Fuck it, oh, we'll I'm do it so, live. I'm so difficult, Michael. So have you ever had any other? Uh... It just so happens you asked. Okay. Yes. And you probably heard this. So bear with me. 
I'll go. I'll give you the short answer. <clears throat> Hunting Colorado, eleven thousand feet up. Uh, I think actually, I think the place is called Donner Pass, which is weird. Is that where people got oh, eaten. Fuck. Yeah. And, well, well, no, but it was called Donner Pass because I think they passed through there, but they didn't eat the people at that. Well, at yeah, that they, point. they passed through it, but it was it was named after them. Um. So it's pretty tough. You've been there, Michael. So you're a cannibal. I'm a cannibal. Um, Apparently I am too, because I was there too. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, if it was... That's the only <laughs> qualification now? <laughs> I guess. I if guess. it was snowing its ass off, that would be, you're dead. That's absolutely <laughs> tough ass terrain. No, we went up and it was very nice weather. It was beautiful. Oh. Um, did, get, <laughs> did get cold and icy the one night. I woke up drunk in a puddle up a water <laughs> it's like ah, nah, 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 ain't going hunting this morning <laughs> yeah it was water water <laughs> if it was whiskey I, I would have <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, my oh, it was my very first night up there We, me and my dad went up his buddy went up there were two tents my dad was like, dude, you snore too much. I'm sleeping in my buddy's tent. And it was like his buddy's tent was a huge Civil War tent with a stove, coffee maker, all fucking like thing. They were like ready for like to spend years up there. I got like a two man hug yourself tent with like you look at the stars deal. Like, and uh, so I'm sitting there. I got my gun underneath my, my pillow, fully loaded, 45. And uh, I'm looking up at the stars. I'm like, man, this is beautiful. This time get better than this, man. Fall asleep. I wake. I wake up. God knows, in the middle of the night, to some god awful grunting, growling thing, stomping its hoofs at me. Um, and I was like, what the fuck is that? I reach back, grab the gun, and I'm like, I'm fucking shooting this bastard if this thing comes any closer. And I hear grunting stomping and i hear it take off and it runs by my tent brushes the tent and i roll over like a con like a fucking combat roll <laughs> and i'm pointing the gun at it right and that was it I just went away no nothing else after that my heart's fucking racing and i'm like what in the absolute fuck was that was that a bear was that it? Is this what you were talking about when you said you almost killed everybody in the camp? Well, yeah. If I if I would have let loose when the <laughs> thing was in front of me, like, yeah, my dad and his buddy would have been dead probably. Like, die, you wicked spotter, Satan! Just like blindly <laughs> shooting. And uh, I woke up the next morning, and um, my dad's like, "God damn it, my back hurts." He's like, "You you fucking snore so." Hard. I'm like, "Dad, dad." dad he's like what my back hurts i'm like did you hear that last night and he's like what the hell are you talking about i said that fucking monster that was like outside of my tent he's like you're gay go back to <laughs> go make some coffee you homo what the fuck? and i'm like like no i didn't say that but like i'm just joking like make light of the situation it's like nobody believed me and it's like yeah okay but i swear to god I have no reason to lie, man. It was like, I don't know what it was. It was I, what I actually think it was, was just a pissed off. Uh, the elk were in rut. So I think it was a, uh, I think it was just an elk. Cause we were down in the, we were down at the campsite calling all day. So they probably moved down there at night and were like, just looking for pussy. Right. You know, that's what they do in the rut. And they found one in, in the two man sir. tent. <laughs> they found <laughs> one with a fucking half loaded Glock. <laughs> it's like uh man, bitch bend over so is this where i tell my story when i was in the rockies and almost got eaten by a, either a sasquatch yes. or a bear this is where we this is where we 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 the fuck? oh no i lie yeah yes yes this is it yeah another story from the same exact spot is it yes damn that's what i was trying to fucking tell you oh see that that's weird the same exact fucking spot. So I went out with him and his father and went archery hunting for elk in the Colorado Rockies. I was so excited to be camping in the Rockies. And uh, I had this 
Now, a one man tent for me is like a coffin. You had the you had the Ron Popeil tent. I did. Like, I did. You throw it in the air and it lands and it. <laughs> yeah, I just dropped my tent and it opened. <laughs> I staked it to the ground. I said, I'm done. <laughs> Dude, that's kind of dope. I know. Well, it was till the next morning. Until uh, well, the, it got so fucking windy, it ripped the tabs off the side. <laughs> and uh, oh, shit. anyway, so I'm so like, I do Dude, my like, tent's uh, gone. So it's all like <laughs> hammock and I have to rig up a roof over it and I have to put up my own floor and everything else. <laughs> fucking 45 minutes of setup. But at least it only weighs like a pound and a half. So. Nope, mine was about 45 seconds of setup. <laughs> I think we woke up the next morning. Your tent was like half gone. And you're like, son of a fucking bitch. So, so I set my tent up and I'm all fucking pleased with it. And I squeeze myself into this thing like a sausage into a casing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't have my CPAP machine, so I'm not going to sleep well. So I'm tired. I really haven't slept for a couple days. Oh, this was after the fight with the... Yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> after the fight with the demon. No, no, I was going to say the uh, the whole mishap at the airport. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, uh, I get in there, it's, it, it's dark. You can't have a campfire because there was wildfires right before that. So, <clears> it's <throat> a little chilly. Laying in there. And... Uh, all of a sudden, I hear what sounds like something trampling through camp. And, uh, dude, I'm telling you, man, you heard the same fucking thing I did. And your first, your first, I go to zip the tent just, just, just to open up and look like, like the tent's going to protect me. And then all of a sudden, I hear this, this growling. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm, I'm scared shitless. I'm in the Rockies. I'm thinking this grizzly bear is going to fucking maul me. Or, or, or Sasquatch. Now, mind you, grizzlies aren't known. They don't go down that far into the Rockies. I don't know that. <laughs> what the fuck could I know? I, I am just saying. I, it could have been a pack of pack of Sasquatch. I don't know. <clears throat> so I'm laying there, and I have no idea what's going on. And I, I, it sounds like he's tossing the cooler. Like I'm thinking, oh, my God. And You see what he does? Right away, he blames it on me. Th this goes on for hours. <laughs> and I'm scared shitless in this tent for hours. And he wouldn't even go out to pee. I no. I every time I went to open a zipper, I'd hear it again. I close the zipper real quick. <laughs> like a little kid. I was scared. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. So this goes on all night long, and I'm so exhausted. And finally the sun <laughs> comes up and I hear his dad outside his tent. So I'm thinking. I, I better tell him that I heard something like it, it's it, it can't be far because I just heard it not long. Yeah, ago. well, fag, go make some coffee. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I unzip the tent a little bit. I see his dad out there. So I unzip it quick. I'm, I run over to tell him that. And then all of a sudden <laughs> I hear it like behind me and I spin around and it's his fucking tent. He's fucking snoring. That's what I heard all fucking night. Nah, this guy, nah, this guy nah. snoring. It had to be more than that. So. Bro. And there's been a, a recently postulated uh, anthropological new theory, I guess, about snoring and how possibly it was a defense mechanism. <laughs> That's how I scared that Yeti away. To make pe make something think that there was this horrible growling predator. Yeah, there was. <laughs> instead of just us sleeping. <laughs> it was a Jonasaurus. <laughs> So it works. So wait, that was our, that was, that's like our whole biolog biological evolution is to be overweight and start to snore. <laughs> to protect yourself from, from, from wild animals. <clears throat> Yo, I'm telling you, dude, it was, it was, it it's was. It's a theory. <laughs> it's still in research. But, so, uh... so I've never had a real, a real, uh, Bigfoot experience of any kind. I think you. I I I, I think you did. I don't think what you heard was me, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, Michael, your experience was the same as mine. <laughs> I don't snore. What are you talking about? Oh no, he knows he snores. I know I snore. But when I when I first, I have seen this man fall asleep standing up. Okay. That being said, when I first went out to Colorado, 
I was not. Fuck? I was not this big, was I? No, no, you weren't. I was. I was in shape. I was a shape. I had a flat stomach, and I was. I was. I was. I could, I could, I could, I was, uh, not snoring. I'll just say that. And that whole fucking, I can't explain it, man. It was so weird. And, and, and then on top of that one, just from right up the hill from us where we were sleeping, um, 200 yards, there was that Yeti structure. And I so wanted to show you it, but the fucking place burned down. But that's the way it Convenient. is. Convenient. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah, I, I said to him. I, I flew out there. I flew out there on my off hours. Like, <laughs> Nobody ever believe me. So, but that well, trip. It's funny because I've always kind of been. Go ahead, Chase. The guy that's you know researching whatever, and I'll ask the weird questions, and people think I'm a little odd for it, but fuck it. <clears throat> um. Crystal's brother actually came up when, when I was talking about this stuff and he's like, oh, no, we we had one chase after us back when we were I, would, I guess they had the Jeep going, they were doing burnouts or whatever, and it was like 1 or 2 in the morning, and his buddy fell off of the back of it and started screaming because he saw this thing running after them and it was an eight foot something that was running on two legs and not a person. Um, Man, I don't know. Do you guys got like a, a lot of nuclear as... power plants down there? Uh, we do have one. <laughs> it's like just some crazed, let loose, like ex worker. So we're over here at Lake uh, Lake Anna. And they actually call it the Lake Anna Monster, and that they're talking about a Bigfoot. Of course, now it's like publicized, and they do Lake Anna Monster festivals and shit like that. And they have a Facebook page with just a guy dressed up in a Bigfoot suit, and it's a good laugh. But Louisa County, not too far away from us, has a lot of sightings. <clears throat> um, but the weird shit is. Crystal's brother, he's this kind of guy that basically lives in the woods. Um, you can hardly ever get a hold of him because he just doesn't feel the need for a phone. Um, he's always out in the woods just fucking around, doing something, hunting or building something or whatever it is. But he'll be out there until the wee hours of the morning, at least he used to be. Um, and he told me about where he and his buddies were out camping and they came up on these three things they what they were and they said they were about nine to ten foot tall very pale almost translucent skin one was crouching over the the corpse of a deer and eating it and the two others were standing next to it, kind of waiting their turn. But what they were the fuck? bipedal, humanoid-ish. Yeah, we got to take the this show. thing. I'd never heard of it before. We got to take this show down south. <laughs> yeah. Well, three years later, I'm listening to the Paranormal Roundtable with Josh Turner. And he starts talking about these things called pale crawlers, not to be confused with the Frisco crawlers, but a pale crawler. And it's everything he described. Um, like there, there's reports all over the North America of them, not <clears throat> as popular or commonplace as Bigfoot. Um, but that's that's when I was like the, the light came on. I was like, oh my god, is that what we, what we're seeing here? Um, and then about a year after I listened to that episode, and actually no, it was probably three months. And I I didn't really talk about it, but Crystal calls me on the phone in tears. She had been on the way home, and on Lake Anna Parkway. One of the big roads out this direction, 
she's just absolutely inconsolable on the phone with me. I don't know what the hell just went in front of my car. I almost hit it. Um, oh, and Jesus. goes on to describe this 10 foot hairless humanoid with almost translucent skin. She's like, yeah, you could see its fucking ribs. Oh my God. And the <laughs> pinkness of its organs. She ran it over. She's like, get a job, hippie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but people are, you know, it's one of those things. There are reports of similar <clears throat> things seen along the East Coast during a pre-colonial era. Oh, dude. But I mean, there's been a recent yeah, believe... uptick in these reportings. What do you think if we if we came down to your neck of the woods, what do you think the chances of us seeing something would be? Slim to none. In the winter time? Actually, probably pretty likely. In the winter time, I'd say around November, November to January is the best is the best time. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm I'm actually looking to get one of the uh, Psionics cameras. It's a full color night vision camera. I I would love to do something, dude. That could you imagine we do all this shit like? Some goddamn hillbillies with a camera and an iPhone caught a bipedal Bigfoot. They they <laughs> they captured it and they they well they we're not gonna tell what we're not gonna say what they did with it. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, um, that's Listen, uh, top I'll secret. One thing I have no interest in trying to keep a Bigfoot cat. That's gonna rip some of these goddamn head off. Oh, I keep one down in my basement. Jesus Christ! I'm like, oh, pretty well. <laughs> We're not here to talk about our kinks. Don't pull on the chains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna get a lot worse. So, uh, the Colorado trip for me, um, <clears throat> I, I no other Bigfoot experience, but uh, <clears throat> there was a paranormal experience. Well. Yeah, and this for me... I call it unexplained because I can't explain it. Because you are the least paranormal person ever. Like... Truth? You you, you don't... You're very skeptic. I am. (laughs) You've never come to me like, hey, I kind of believe in this story. I'm like, no, it's just... You're very... I'm skeptical. You're a normie. Whoa. (laughs) So to speak. Anyways... I digress. So tell your story. We had a long flight and we partook in some drinks along the way. <clears throat> and uh we got to Denver Airport. Uh the rental car place who eventually did us very right uh didn't have our Yeah, tri- they were the, they were about to get blown up from like the team from Philly. <laughs> they had no Which cars. Was not us, by the way. They had no cars from for anybody. Like plane loads and plane loads of people coming in that had cars reserved. No cars. So they were paying for people's Uber and hotel room to come back the oh next day. God. I remember that Uber ride was so weird. Yeah, I know. That and I was like, "What's the furthest Uber ride you were?" Because Osama bin Laden. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "How far?" <laughs> Have you driven an Uber car? I love Mexico. And I was like, mm, all right, whatever. The dude was weird. So we get to this hotel. We check in. It's late. Because we didn't want to ask his dad to come out that late to the the airport. And so, um, like, we get to the hotel, and I'm just dead tired. I don't have my breathing machine. I don't have my CPAP. I know I'm not going to sleep well. So I laid down in this bed, and as hard as it was for me to fall asleep without my CPAP machine, I started falling asleep right away. Him, he's dead to the world in two seconds. <laughs> Snoring like a grizzly bear. But I knew it was him next to me, so it didn't Or is it me. an elk? Or an elk. Or a Sasquatch. <laughs> uh, so I'm laying on the bed, and I'm half... You know how you're, like, you're not fully asleep, but you're... you're <clears throat> You're conscious, but you're you're so relaxed. In the in between. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I feel, and my eyes are closed. I feel 
something at the foot of my bed, not just standing there, like going to crawl on my bed, like just crawl up over me on my bed. And I <laughs> probably the cockroach were you feeling a lot of weight or was it just just like, like something pushing on the cushion on, on the mattress presses on the mattress. Nothing it, touching it me. A, it was a firm okay, palm. Yeah. It was a firm hand. <laughs> so I'm like, and without opening my eyes, I'm like, John, <laughs> stop fucking around. I got to get some sleep. And he rolls, he rolls over. He goes, huh? And I look over. I and doubt he, I even rolled over. And I, he's in his, he's in his bed. And I'm like, the fuck and so i start going back again and i feel it again and then the the bed starts like undulating and i'm thinking oh it's one of those beds that has the coin operated thing next to it so i'm reaching over to to shut it off because i just want to fall asleep and i'm looking and it's not there i get up and turn the light on and he's like what the fuck (laughs) and like there's, there's nothing there and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And this happened like two or three times. And I finally just said, fuck it, and fell asleep. Fuck it, I'll just get molested. I don't care. I tried to wake him up and tell him, dude, <laughs> stop fucking with me. And like, I finally I love, realized. I love how you blame me like eight times <laughs> <laughs> before you realized that you were just, I don't know, half crazed, like sleep deprived. I, I don't, dude. I don't know. I and I, I, I never figured it out. But deprived. We, yeah, yeah, I, deprived. I, yeah. Shut up! I was hoping you missed that. <laughs> Damn it! I was deprived. <laughs> Ron, how are you doing today? <laughs> so uh, I, I I can never explain what happened. Wait, that's not. I thought you said that like the the something was rubbing your leg. No, no, you said that. That was your party. That's the, your part of the story. The, the sheets got pulled down underneath you. No. Come on. You're like, "Oh, Johnny, please stop. <laughs> Don't go any further. And that would be horrible." <laughs> that was your story. And I was like, "What are you talking? I'm fucking asleep, man. Leave me alone." You like rubbing my shoulder like, "Fucking stop touching me, motherfucker." <laughs> nothing like that. I never felt touched. <clears throat> No, oh, you were touched, <laughs> but always something on the bed or moving the mattress, or it was just weird. Like I can't I, explain I, it. I will agree, though. He was very like, "Holy shit!" Like this has never happened to me before. All jokes aside, and he's like, "That was fucking weird, man." Like there was something. Oh yeah. I mean, we were in like a crazy like. I don't know how many hookers got killed in that hotel. Probably a thousand. <laughs> like, but it was uh, like on the outskirts <laughs> of fucking nowhere in the middle of like the desert somewhere. It was probably a detached soul of one of the hookers that got I, killed. I even took a picture of their, their sign outside. It was like, yeah. what is it? It's, it's, it's like, not about poo. This is like dog poo for sale. Yeah. But like one of the signs dropped off, one of the letters dropped off. It was like dogs welcome, but it read like, dog poo welcome it was like <laughs> dogs welcome uh pool i forget yes yeah, something, something like that. that but it looked like dog poo for sale <laughs> <clears throat> like what kind of place did you get us i'm like are you a smoking in here i'm like no what is that smell the whole place is, is no smoking on every door and the whole place smelled like stale cigarettes yes yeah, the old west for you man oh jesus yeah just leftovers from a bygone era, you know? So yeah. I have one other that I cannot explain. Oh, do tell. Do I know this one? Yeah. So when my wife was young. Oh, okay. Now said. She, that, okay. So our the house we live in now was her parents' house, and I built an addition on it that was as big or slightly bigger than the house that right. was there. And it, it the property was part of a fort back in the way back days. Now, if, if if you go American back, Indian War times, there there are signs like legit signs planted. I don't know if you have this in Virginia, um, but they're they're like plaques pl- planted in the ground, and it says like this oh, house yeah. here All was all over the place, right? Yeah, so you, you know what I'm talking about. So there's there's one down right down at the like, corner down yeah, here. It says this is the site of of uh Fort uh, Fort Lebanon. Yeah, that's what it was. Indian battleground. Yeah. So down the Schuylkill River, American Indian War. 
uh, and we actually have a, you could tell it was a wall at one time, a stone wall on our property that I think was one of the walls for the fort. Anyway, my wife, when she was young, saw what she thought was a pilgrim lady. Now, I attribute that to she knew it was a fort. She She's susceptible to ghost stories. Uh, I, I was never that. Anyway, I passed that off as family thing, whatever. Uh, so my dad lives in Iowa. His life, wife is from Iowa. His wife's sister's from Iowa, but she moved to Virginia and she was a, a dispatcher down there. So my dad and, and wife and my, my brother and sister came to visit. Her sister from Virginia came up to meet and they all stayed here. And, uh, she woke up in the morning and she, she looks at me. She goes, you can't make fun of me. I said, Oh, I most certainly can. That's kind of my thing. And she's like, no, please, please, please just don't, don't joke around about this. I just have a question to ask you. I said, go ahead. She goes, have you ever seen anything here? I'm like, what do you mean? She goes like, have you ever seen anything? I said, I see lots of things. I don't know what you mean. Cause I wasn't even thinking ghost. And she goes, well, um, she was living, she was in the living room when she was sleeping on an air mattress. And she said, I woke up in the middle of the night. I looked up and there was this lady dressed in like very, very old fashioned clothing, almost like a pilgrim standing at the foot of my bed. And I said, stop right there. So I had Deb come out. I said, just repeat it to her. She said, you told me you wouldn't make fun of me. I said, I'm not making fun of you. And she repeated it. And Deb was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I saw when I was a kid. So now she didn't know the story. I I find it unexplainable how someone who is not from the area, doesn't know the history of the property, who never heard that story before, to say that she saw the same thing that my wife did when she was younger. I think that's fucking cool. Hell yeah. Maybe that's what your dog barks at all the time. Probably. <laughs> the white like staring off into nowhere and like, Barking like, what the fuck are you looking at? He's just, just an idiot dog. Nah, man, they see that shit, dude. I'm telling you, <laughs> they totally yeah, see that it, shit. Like I said on the on the first part, I think they're a little, a little bit more in tune. Yeah, they can. Um, um, no, I've had my fair share of ghost stories too. Yes, um, I don't know if I went into this last time, but my. Um, a per I'll say a person that I knew in my younger life. Their <coughs> their parents' house was a registered. Help me out here, Mike. Registered registered historical Regist site. Historical site. <laughs> there we go. Got it. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> it was a one of those and um. Apparently, it was a beautiful, a beautiful stone farmhouse. But apparently, it was where the Union soldiers would come back from the war and recover. And I remember her telling me, she's like, I've seen stuff at the top of the stairs. Her dogs were always like alerting the shit, <laughs> excuse me, all over. And I'm like, I never saw anything there. I never felt anything weird. Never felt. Like you see, like I have uh, friends of mine that tell me I walk through like some cold apparition. It's like, whoo, you feel like this cold thing walk through you. You're like, what the fuck was that? And uh, something weird happens, but I never had anything like that. But I mean, the place is ripe for like, and they have old photos from like, I would say like the 19th century. It, 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 it just like when photography came out and. It's really cool, man. I'm like, how can a place like that not have history? How can there not be some oh, right. poor bastard lingering around there? I'm like, oh, is it breakfast? <laughs> I missed the boat again. God damn it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just, you know, like, just. Some... Well, the thing is, that's that's always fascinated me is, like, you have different types of hauntings. Uh intelligent or your what we what i call echoes um where it's just kind of like a replay that 
isn't really aware of anything. It's like, are these just, was it an emotional time for this individual? And that just kind of a, imprinted on its surroundings. And so it replays. And yeah, then right. the, I mean, the other one is what we, you know, what we talked about last time <clears throat> is it, you know, their consciousness truly still stuck there. Yeah. Is it uh, something that we stepped into and saw like kind of just like a videotape playing of that person there right. in that moment? Uh, it makes you wonder, like, we don't know. And it's so fun to like think of that and just like play on that and, and, you know, just not necessarily believe it, but just like just dream about it, you know, and like think we don't know. Could it be? Like I um my my um cousin, yep. she was a lot older than me. I mean a lot older than me. Uh and they bought a house down near Rehoboth in the woods of Delaware down there. And apparently their house was like an old plantation. And um her mom it was always told that she had the sixth sense. And she, I remember going down there as a kid and she had this easel set up and she had pictures and there was like always like these ghosts, like ghostly apparitions in every photo. And, uh, you know, I'm like a little kid. I'm like, that's creepy. I don't want to stay here anymore. <laughs> and, but it was never like malicious <laughs> or like, um, you know, but to me it was, it was, it was kind of scary. Like, I'm like, I don't want to be in a haunted house. And I remember my cousin, God bless her soul now, she's passed away. But um, she's like, yeah, I, I would go downstairs um, and the rocking chair would be like, rrr, 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 rocking back and forth at like middle of the night. She goes, I look at it and stop. She's like, I, I, she's like, I always remember her saying it didn't scare me. It didn't bother me. And she's like, I went to the bathroom, came back upstairs, and then just slowly start rocking again. And then she's like, Yeah, our shit would all, like our keys would always go missing. Like they wind up in the freezer. And I don't know if she, I, I don't think she said that shit to like scare me because keys in the freezer, I would have to just blame on ADHD. <laughs> it could be. I mean, they had, uh, because I've done that shit. <laughs> I I have never put I've my never keys, put in, my the keys in the freezer. Um but uh <laughs> I've found my fucking TV I, remote in the refrigerator, all kinds of shit. I, I I honestly I don't think she was trying to scare me, but uh I just remember her her mom having that fucking easel out front of her house and you look at it and you're like oh, weird pictures and shit. I don't even know what the fuck they were. But uh, that's see, cool, though. I'm I am such a skeptic that I went to the uh, Lizzie Borden house, the real one, and uh, it was my oh, yeah. it was my wife's birthday present to me. I slept in the room where the mother was killed, and there was all these ghost hunters because it was the anniversary of the the murders. And uh, See, but I think that place has been like over. Like, maybe if you like that place, I would like stopped all the idiots from coming there, and we're like, okay, this place has been dormant for like twenty years. Now you can sleep here. I'll sleep there. I don't care if you. I know you would. No, huh. but I would like to see what you saw then. Well, like if you, if but, that was the case. So there, there's a picture someplace. The exact time the father was murdered. I was sitting in the exact position that the father was laying in on, on the bench that he was laying on with a reenactor of Lizzie Borden standing behind me with an ax and all these people who were ghost hunters and stuff there, they were like, Oh my God, you're going to, you're going to piss off the spirits. Don't do this. Don't do this. We beg you. Don't do this. And I'm like, <laughs> Whatever. They say, you know, you like your throat I mean, gets slit. You're like, oh. But I thought I thought it was cool Michael, because you should have done that in in the parlor where you could sit down and you could go through all the evidence that they collected at the crime scene, all the court transcripts and yeah. everything. That I find cool. You should have got fake blood. And be like, ha ha ha, losers. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, he's dying. <laughs> yeah, you all suck. 
But they're all taking these pictures. No, I used to do some ghost hunting and shit. <clears throat> I've never really um, got. I, am I? Am I back like, uh, this? It, I'm gonna be low again. Yeah. Go ahead, Chase. Bitch. Oh, you're good. Um, so we're in the Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg area. Everything is a battlefield. Like you can't walk more than ten steps and not be where somebody died. Oh, see, that's fucking awesome. There's um, God. Be- yeah, that's awesome. Somebody died every yeah, ten steps. Like bloody <laughs> angle right. is right. Yeah, America. Um. Yeah, I, I actually passed bloody angle going to work. You know, there's Stonewall Jackson where he died, and then where he they buried his arm. That's I don't think you necessarily around here is just. I don't think you necessarily get like a uh, apparition or something all the time, but you gotta see some weird shit every now and then. Just with all that crap that went yeah, on. Um, I used to work over at. Uh, a Home Depot up on Route 3 in a shopping center called Harrison Grossing. <clears throat> they had to halt construction on that entire shopping center like six different times because they kept finding human remains. I thought you were going to say some what old guy came, was, kept coming in like, well, I need some hand hewn <laughs> oak wood. Like, like who? What the fuck? Like yeah, this guy ordered a whole shopping cart full of hand hewn oak wood, and he never showed up again. I'm like god damn it, not again! The <laughs> third time this year, <laughs> that son of a bitch. No, um, no, they were finding like piles of arms where it was an old field clinic. Oh, uh, uh, amputation pit. Ugh. Um, exactly, and the, but also bodies, like full bodies. Um. Dude, that's but no that joke. Home Depot is so active, it's ridiculous. Like I was I just started a shift one morning. It was like 9 a.m. I'm walking toward <laughs> appliances and kitchen and bath. And there's this guy in in the plumbing aisle. I'm like, hey, do you need any help? He goes to stand up to say, Oh no, I'm fine. But as he stands up from the shin height shelf comes two rolls of duct tape that come out and fly up and hit him <laughs> in the chin. <laughs> um like that it, yeah it just just straight up thump, thump, and he goes like uh nope don't need any help now and just fucking walked off nope <laughs> nope not doing it not doing it not doing it like, go on now get <laughs> like uh things would yeah things would fly off the shelves all the time um something would call your name from an empty set of aisles Shit, I, uh, I'd be doing that to coworkers all the would time. Be whistling quite a bit. <laughs> well, In fact, yeah, you we got we got that you could do that, but when it gets the ghost of Dylan, sorry, we we supposedly have a ghost at our facility. In the uh, dude, I'm telling you, there's hold on. Oh, can I uh, take a little break here? Go ahead. Is it, are we gonna? Am I gonna mess things up? Don't mess things up. Go ahead. Bring me a beer back. All right. You guys, uh, we'll just wait for you patiently. Yeah, in in the uh, the uh, basement underneath our facility, uh, there's supposedly the ghost of Dylan, which nobody's ever seen or heard, but John's heard it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but everybody's everybody's oh, okay. talked about it. Every anytime something happens in the basement, we always say, "Oh, that's the ghost of Dylan." That's funny. Um, actually, there's a, a Firestone that I used to work at there in the Harrison Crossing Shopping Center. Is he okay? He's such a fucking idiot. What the fuck just happened? He's over there getting raped by the ghost of Dylan. He goes, oh, not again. I, I keep coming to this spot every day at, at three o'clock and it happens every day. Um, but you'd be like out in the, in the stock room where they have all the tires and on more than one occasion, um, I wouldn't say a lot, but you know, two, three times, you know, we had bottles of like transmission fluid or whatever, just get 
fucking thrown across the stock room while you're in there alone. Um, we named him Robert, I think it was, or Roger or something like that, but he would, you know, fling open the break room door. It was one of those spring loaded double direction doors. And I swear to God, I just watched somebody walk in there. So you'd go in there to see who it was. Cause you're like, no, everybody that's supposed to be on shift is out on the floor and it's fucking empty. That's weird. Like I said, there's there's definitely stuff that I've seen that I can't explain, but oh look, Johnny's back. He's, hey yo, he's done hanging out with Dylan. <laughs> oh, oh, Dylan, please. Oh. One of uh, Crystal's least favorite encounters. It was <clears> actually we were on the way back from recording. Well, not recording. We we're on the way back from the studio of Barrel Age Flicks. And um, we were, I don't know, probably a quarter mile from the driveway. And this is out in Partlow. And I was coughing and looking downward. But she just shrieks and starts crying. The can is over there. I did hear over to the left side of the truck because I had the windows down oh, like a, a thump thump. What'd you hit? And I was wondering what the hell happened and she wouldn't talk about it for like a half hour. Your house but cat. She describes <laughs> this. Um, best thing she can re- relate it to is like What's his fucking face? Um, Lupin <clears throat> Remus from Harry Potter. Okay. Remus Lupin, whatever. The guy. That werewolf is, she swears up and down, that's what it looked like. And so I don't know if I, I think I mentioned Dogman earlier. We, in our we part actually, one. that was, it, we, we mentioned it uh, briefly on the last one, but I don't, I, I don't think it, it got. So that was one thing I wanted to bring up is Dogman. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's a great one. It's again horrible name. It's just it just sounds dumb, but um, it it was like it was almost like a dog man with mange. Now, if, for those that aren't familiar with dog man, because I wasn't and I am um, still not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what people most often describe them as, as is like the werewolf from Van Helsing, but a little bit thinner and leaner. Real high pointy ears, you know, humanoid arms, clawed fingers, stuff like that, but highly aggressive. You know, people, their dogs go missing or they'll find their dogs just absolutely eviscerated by something massive in an area where there are no large predators. That's Um, weird. There's... Actually, I did find one or two photos of, they call it a gugwe, um, but it, but a gugwe is kind of like in between, between Bigfoot and, and a dog man, but it's like holding a limp body of somebody's white dog. Now, is there a, what the fuck? you can barely make it out. Is there a range for dog man, like an area where they're more predominant? Yeah, it's where you can beat them dog food most of north well so they're all through central america a lot of north america um they're they're called hombre lobos um in in mexico um you'll hear about that a lot in texas um yeah in in texas they're actually very uh, prevalent um to have like this um, back almost like a hyena is that close to a chubacabra no, hell no. Chupacabra. So that's that's actually a really neat one. Um, oh, fuck, sorry. This concept of a, El Chupacabra started in Venezuela. Um, and it was this reptilian little fucking red-eyed thing. Um, but people tar- start looking at these like canine 
things and call them cabras here in America. Whereas I would say it's just a dog with mange, but some people call them blue dogs. Blue and dogs? I think a blue dog, blue if dog. you're going blue to dog. consider it a cryptid, is is probably the, the more accurate term. But a lot of people call these little canine things uh, chupacabra, and that's, that's not a chupacabra. See, that's weird. I've, I've never really gotten into... Not saying that it's not real, but I've never really gotten into the cryptid thing, other than Bigfoot, eh, maybe Mothman, because that whole bridge thing. Um, I'd say Bigfoot and Mothman are the two most well-known <laughs> cryptids in the North America. But uh, eh, maybe, and then maybe my third would be Jersey Devil. Uh, have you ever been down in the Pine yeah. Barrens? They're just, it's weird. I have not. I've seen video of it, and I've heard it's nothing but fucking creepy vibes. Dude, it is. It's like, how the fuck can Dirty Jersey be... Like, you, you have the the beach part of Jersey going down south, and it is literally nothing but pine trees. Like, uh, it's weird. Dude, it's fucking well, weird. They call New Jersey the Garden State, and that's if you're growing smokestacks. Or pine trees. I mean, I feel as the Jersey is <laughs> uh, mainly like a huge city, like Philadelphia, um, and but when you start going down towards the south, it's it's just those fucking pine trees, and like nothing grows underneath the pine trees. It's so acidic, like leaves don't last. So it's just it's it's barren. That's why they call it the the pine barrens. Pine trees. Anywho. Yeah, I've always been kind of intrigued by that area. I mean, yeah, you should definitely go see it, man. It's pretty cool. What about the Wendigo? My only issue with the... the... Oh. um, Okay, real quick. My only issue with the Jersey Devil is that it doesn't follow biological norms. But what I mean by that is the the <clears throat> description, the the body structure just doesn't <laughs> make sense, you know. Right. I don't. I don't even remember what the hell the 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 Jersey Devil is. Well, we <coughs> we is did a, is, is we a, did do a show like on the, the Jersey head Devil. Of a, of a hammerhead bat. Does it fly? Bat wings and like horse hooves. It flew out yeah, of the chimney, supposedly. Flew out of the chimney after the lady mm-hmm. gave birth to it. Yeah, see, uh, oh, it's, it's just like so the, hard to believe. The hell kite of Romania. It's which is a really interesting and very hard to research uh, cryptid. Yeah, we did a show. Um, on, we did a show on the Jersey they have Devil. Chameleon like ability. <clears throat> really? Yeah. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, when there was a bunch of sightings, uh, they were talking about it possibly being an African fruit bat. It said recording paused. No. Where? No. Does it still say that? On my side, it says recording paused and uploading recording. It. Oh, you you're not recording now. Oh no. Did we do it again? I didn't touch it. I didn't do it. Hang on. Let me stop completely and record again. Nope. Recording resumed. Okay. So All back right. to your sister, um, your your stepsister stuck in the dryer. <laughs> oh no, step bro. <laughs> uh, wait, what? Uh, right, shit. Wrong podcast. So what I was saying was uh, some of the recent, and when I say recent, uh, I'm going back a few years before we did the, let's say five, ten years ago, <clears throat> they were saying an African fruit bat, which is a very large bat. Yeah, the hammerhead bat. Yeah. that That's what they thought it, it could have been. Who knows? Is it bad that I'm selective in my 
cryptoids. Your cryptozoology? Yeah, like no, like uh, on that one, the Jersey Devil. No, uh, this one, dog. No, man, I yeah. think uh, um, approaching this field with a, a healthy doubtfulness is important. <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, I think I know we touched on this. Um, I mean, it's like if you want to. That light just went off. <laughs> it's it's emotion. Uh, we touched we. Oh. Did touch on this earlier is the 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 stories of Native American lore. I can't dismiss that. I'm sorry. I don't care who oh, you yeah. are. I, I I I will not. No, sir. I won't dismiss that either. You had mentioned that you're uh, part Choctaw. Yes, sir. I I have uh, family friends who are also part Choctaw. I got you. Yeah, the um, I was talking about Edmund Francis Goldie, and their the war party. The uh, Goldie, uh, her mom, uh, Dot. I don't know if you ever met Dot. Um, and uh, I guess by extension, my goddaughter, Chelsea. Okay, <clears throat> but I mean, you, you, I just yeah. I, to my knowledge, my grandmother. There's... On my mother's side was full blood. You have a. I think they're much farther than that off the. You have a a people that were so in tune with the earth. I mean, and and th- th- there wasn't a phone distraction. There wasn't cable. There wasn't this. There wasn't that. There wasn't you know, and they wrote about these things. So, how can you dismiss that? I don't dismiss it. I don't. I, I no, just, I'm not saying you dismiss it. But I, what I'm saying is, I don't dismiss it. What I do is because I, I approach it with skepticism. I, um, I, I don't want to insult the traditions, right? But <clears throat> people see what they want to see. I think in some cases, yeah. And if yeah. there's a story that's passed down from generation to generation that's uh inbred in your your being and you're more likely to have that experience than someone like me who doesn't have that i would think well i mean there's right and i think that kind of goes into what i was talking about in part one about people who are experiencers or right um sensitive i mean it's it's whether sure. you're yeah. experiencing it more because of either possible mental illness or if you're just very suggestible or if you're actually experiencing it. Now, this this is way off the topic, way off. But I want to touch on it just for a second, and maybe we could do another show on this if you have an interest in this. Um, the uh, Stairways in the Woods. Do you ever hear of those? Oh, Stairways yeah. in the Woods. This, yep. There's like like you say with the um the way Look that they're supposed going out all rogue. Listen, I I I do research. Holding an audible. Uh like you said, there's uh a playbook on how to approach a Sasquatch. There is also a playbook, a written playbook on how to uh deal with these stairways in the woods for the National Park Service. I'm I well. Oh, you blow me away here, bro. That. I always thought of them as like an art project. Well, you 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 blow my mind. No, no, I'm serious. Wait, no, I know. I'm saying like you're doing national park shit, and like you know how long I followed all that crap with like the David Paulitis, the four one one, Bigfoot, <laughs> uh, cryptids, just. I just don't want, the rabbit, the I don't want people hole. to think I'm crazy. What's, I'm not. I'm not saying I believe in it. I'm just saying I find it odd that so many people have well, had no, these experiences. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't? No, no, I don't. Oh my god! That's what I just. Oh, said. we're we're doing oh, it then. Super cool. Oh, we're doing that. A stairway to no place. Okay, but, but people oh, disappear. Yeah. It's a stairway to see. I've heard people disappearing in the I woods. Imagine it's probably something to do with the fae. Fairies. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on the Fey? How's that? I, I think they're great for D and D. I used to love playing D and D when I was a kid. 
Well, <laughs> so you have Fey and elves in Iceland and Scotland. Over here in the Central America and North America, you have them called Duende. Um, I think it, it, it translates to um, inhabitant or dweller. Um, and, and these are actually well, Wait small minute, humans on. that are seen a lot more commonly than you think. Were you being serious? Or did I just sign myself up to like some kind of fucking nerd game? No, 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 no. I'm being serious. Because I'll do both. I don't care. Dude, you know where I heard about it? <laughs> I'm down for both. Do you know where I heard about it? Me. You turned me on to the podcast that I listened to that on. One of Rob Dog's stories? No shit. Yes. Well, you're welcome. But I, I think I think we should step into that. Uh, hell yeah. I'm, do, I'm down. But you're going to have to actually do some research. Watch a video or something. <laughs> no. You know what I'm going to need? Or at, le- at no, least. No, they're, they're, I think they're fascinating. At least listen to Rob Dog. It was that I can do. It was like right after we first started. No shit. That was one of the shows I listened to. See, when we started the show, when we did our, our we did 10 episodes before we released anything. Uh, we only release six of those ten. Right. Um, the others are, are I still have they're, them, but they're uh, lost to time. They, they'll never underneath they'll, concrete. Never be released. The ocean again. <laughs> but <laughs> so after we did our first five, I was editing them, and I said to him and, and the other person that was doing them with us, "I'm like, dude, I cannot release these. Like, we're vulgar. We're like, it, it's bad." And they said, well, what do you mean? Have you ever listened to, um, what is it, uh, Brohio podcast? And I'm like, no. And they said, well, listen to a couple episodes of Brohio, then make your decision. I listened to one episode. Well, actually, See, I ended up I, listening to about 20 episodes of Brohio. That is still one of my favorites. And I'm like, yeah, we're good. We, <laughs> we're fine. We can release these. Yeah. <laughs> so if we, if we could do a collab with Brian. Hey, people listen to Barrel Age Flicks, man. Uh, Barrel Age Flicks is, is tame compared to Brohio. Oh. Uh, we, we're tame compared to Brohio. Uh, oh, I'll just give shit. you a. Um, at, at one point, and this is pretty tame for them, uh, I think one of the reviewers sent them a huge, gigantic dildo that was like. It was like four foot tall. And they, they, they call they call Girth Brooks. Yeah, Girth Brooks. Those things are like three thousand dollars. Yeah. Yes. Like somebody sent yes. them. Send them one. And, um, and and they, they take it around with them to, to when they do live broadcasts. <clears throat> That's fucking hilarious. I've seen people are where like they'll get one as like a demo or something from or like a promo piece and they'll use it as a headphone stand or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, they um you should check them out, man. They're they're I, I would love to do a thing with them. Um I left comments on their thing. I think they just blocked me and like this dude's really hard. <laughs> um but uh yeah, they're 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 they they talk about like the shit we would talk about, like fringe stuff, cryptids, whatever, uh fucking serial killers. That's that's another one of my favorites is their uh true crime and serial killers yeah we've done a bunch i'm yeah. starting to have trouble speaking now <laughs> well we're we're about you to wrap up like anyway worked a full day and then sat down for a show <sighs> yeah so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up anyway but uh if if you're interested in doing the uh stairs in the woods with us that would be that'd be cool Dude, we should, man. Like, I I'd... tell you what, I'm I'm totally down if you want to make this a, a paranormal series, and I'll just guest on every single one. That'd be cool. Hell yeah, bro. Um, so I think we're gonna wrap this one up because we started off on Bigfoot, and I am so glad that we branched out uh, into some other stuff. Um, and I I think like having someone like me who's a skeptic, and um. Someone You're a like skeptic, yes. turned believer. Not not turned, bent a little bit. 
I'm like the Peronis. <laughs> I'm like the Peronis of of, <laughs> of paranormal. <laughs> I'm bent a little bit. Uh, and then someone like John, who is he, he he's here and he's here. And then uh, you, who who happen to have a, a good amount of experiences, which is it's cool as hell. So, hell yeah. Uh, like I said, it, it's I have a surprising amount of them, but I wouldn't consider myself what they call an experiencer or anything like that. And I've just become super uh, entranced by it, if you will. So I just <clears throat> go down the rabbit holes and do a lot of research, and I find it absolutely fa- fascinating. Dude, what would you do for the ascendant and like some dog man like ate Chase's face? I was like, no. Like Chase, Chase, was that real? Oh, Are you man. okay, man? Oh, oh my god, he's like, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what the fuck just happened, Michael? No, but legit, if you guys do want to, to come down, I wouldn't mind doing a camp out. Like I said, we're on 48 acres, um, we're we got some pretty good woods, and it's Oh, relatively me and Michael uh, have a tent reliable <laughs> me and Michael have a tent I've got a hockey mask Michael's got a machete oh my god <laughs> no, we'll just... find some chicken to sleep in that <laughs> just throw against a tree there we go <laughs> paranormal and horror movies put it all together <laughs> <laughs> all right with that we've taken on a whole lot of paranormal and cryptids. But yeah, for sure. Someday, yes. Hell yeah. I think it wasn't an offer, man. So you guys go on and take on the world. And uh, look forward to us getting together again and talking about some other stuff. It's fun. Yeah, man. Hey, this is Sammy from Barrel H Chicks, and I'm here with Yen. Hey, everybody. How you doing, Yen? I'm feeling amazing. (laughs) Yes, you are. Well, what we're here to do today is talk about where you can find Barrel Age Chicks. You can find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and Good Pods. Yep. On the Barrel Age Chicks, we have myself, Sammy. We have Yen, of course. And then we have Snow, Crystal, and Harley. Yep. Um, We enjoy talking about everything from movies to being current moms to being just... The ladies of the Barrel H Flicks boys and their shenanigans in general. Please join us without kids. Thank you. Yes, our podcast is explicit content, so it is definitely not for little ears. But come out, let your hair down to hear the chick side of things. It's a shit show. Please join us. We need some mom time. 